Hi guys! So, this is a little demonstration I had planned for you. Uh, the idea is to show you uh, basically uh, how I run downhill. So I'm going to just run for a moment and then I will start commenting and explaining what I do, why, how to do, uh, what to do and what not to do. So let's start here. So right now, what the reason I'm going right and left is because I'm using the balance of my body, the weight of my body, to easily descend. Instead of going just straight, I go around whenever possible. In order that basically uh, allows me to use my weight as uh, well as an element to push me in one direction or another and have the better path and also control my basically what is falling down. So as you can see, I'm doing little steps. The reason for that is it allows me to easily catch myself if I have a missed step. So basically, small steps allow me to also um, be very soft on the touch. So as you can see, I'm not doing bam bam bam. You see, I'm not doing that. What I'm doing is very small steps, trying not to go too far at one time. So the idea here is to always choose the best spot and also never close yourself the next the next one. Okay? So basically right here you can see I always try to land my foot on a regular, not an inclined surface. So as flat as possible. Okay? Also your foot might slip but it's okay if you're already ready to lift it off or set the next foot and if you're going past it. So that's it. The other thing is I'm always trying to land my feet on a soft surface whenever possible, something not slippery, not wet, uh, preferably. And, and that's it. Now, when you go down, you use these muscles, these ones. They hold you. They allow you to control your descent. You don't, uh, you don't get carried away. So that's the reason why it's not easy to go down. You have, re you have to have really strong muscles, and you get tired really easily. Uh, so that's the muscles you have to develop. The knees take a lot, and that's the reason why I have soft landing. Uh, you have to try and avoid any injury and the injuries come if you go too too strong on the landing if you don't pay attention and you land badly so basically always try and land on a flat surface never try and land like this or like this or anything like that you see uh, that is bad that's something to really avoid always try and land on a soft surface uh, try not to land on uh, on a rock let's say like this like this one you should see it so basically trying and land like this your foot might go like that uh, it might slip it's a bad thing also landing like this is bad it's something you should try to avoid uh, the stones they're complicated, uh, if they're flat, if they're solid, you can use them, but try not to sleep, that, that comes quite, quite easily. So, let's keep going, and you see there's a lot of little rocks, so the little rocks that can move, that you should try and avoid. Okay, so, on a flat surface, it's actually quite easy, but when it starts going down, you see, always control so th the idea is always to look in front of you always to have a little way planned ahead so when you're here you already know where you're gonna land the next step and the next and the next and you have an idea if you have to slow down or go faster so for that you have to sometimes check in front of you so as you can see this is quite a slippery path 
uh, I did a lot of small tabs to control my weight and that allowed me to stop. Uh, that's one of the techniques to slow down. When you're near uh, the a cliff, you should always try and avoid to step too close to it, okay? For instance, if you step here, there is a risk that you might sleep or there is a risk that it's not stable. It's really something uh, you should try to be wary of. So try to always stay a little further from uh, from the, the from a cliff. That's it. Now, one of the strengths you have to have when you're a trail runner is the ability to step right, left, uh, slow down, change your pace instantly, because that's the only way to uh, basically choose. Uh, a good way so that's something sometimes you have to walk sometimes you have to even stop and move one foot after the other to go over an obstacle always adapt to the terrain so right now for instance I'm controlling my descent so that means I'm using my muscles not to go too fast here it's stable enough I can accelerate and do, and do bigger steps here it's going steeper, so I have to control again. So it all depends on the brain. As you can see, the path is quite narrow. So here you have to be really wary not to cross your legs. If you do that, you're dead. Also, lots of little stones. It's okay, you can sleep from time to time. Yeah, the stone can roll under your foot, but as long as you keep going fast enough, little step it's okay and on turns you have to absolutely slow down because that's the most dangerous place you can easily keep going or control badly this is you get tired very a lot doing that the turns the controls that's something that's really hard okay well basically let's have a run it's very intense, you get tired a lot and you have to really watch it so that the muscles, uh, so that you don't pull a muscle. Uh, you have to always watch your muscles, watch your legs. Uh, you can easy, easily have an injury in this part or on the leg around here. Or you can, you can have something that happens a lot, which is a misstep where you go like this. And this, is, uh, this can be really bad. Now what I have is, it happens from time to time to me and I'm always on my legs, I'm never straight. I'm always very soft on the legs. So when this happens, basically I go like this, but directly on the other leg, I go, uh, I go on the other leg and pull the, right, the other leg up, pull the leg where this happened up. So this allows me to basically avoid an injury by going like this and immediately catching myself, pulling myself up and allowing to keep going before an injury happens. So I hope you liked it and if you have any questions please ask them. See you soon.